Hey everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you how you can use the OpenShot video editor. OpenShot is free and open source. Oh, but hold up, it's free. Is it any good? Well, I've tried lots of paid and also free video editors and OpenShot sits right near the top of video editors. The thing I like about it so much is that it has a very simple and also intuitive interface. This means that anyone can come in, even someone brand new to video editing, and you can figure it out. But what's really nice is it also has a lot of rich and advanced functionality under the covers. So you can pull together some truly impressive videos. Regardless of your operating system, it'll work for you. It works on Windows, Mac, Linux, and now also Chrome OS. If you want to follow along today in this tutorial, I've included some sample files down below in the description. The best way to learn is by doing. Also, I've included some timestamps down below so you can jump to the section of the video that interests you the most. All right, well, why don't we jump on the PC and let's start with how you can even get OpenShot. To get the OpenShot video editor, open up your web browser and head to the website openshot.org. Once you land on the home page, you should see a download button right here in the center of the page. You also have a download link right up here. Go ahead and click on that. On the download page, it should automatically identify what operating system you're on. Here I'm on Windows and it also recommends a 64-bit installer. However, if for whatever reason you're looking for a different download, like I mentioned in the intro, you can install OpenShot on any major platform. Here you see all of them down below. To kick off your download, just click on download and run through the install process. Once you finish downloading and installing OpenShot, open up the application. Once you open it, you'll land in an interface that looks like this. If this is your first time using OpenShot, you'll also see this welcome message or call out right in the center of the screen. And when you click through this, it'll point out all of the major areas of the interface. Over here on the left-hand side, we have project files, and this is where we're going to load up all of our video, audio, and image files. In a moment, we'll do that. I'll click on next, and down below we have the timeline. This is where we start to pull together our video and to lay things out in the order that we want them to appear. And right up here, we also have the preview pane where we'll be able to see what our video looks like. And finally, once we pull everything together, we'll be able to export our video. Now don't worry, we're gonna run through all of this step-by-step step so you can see exactly how it works. To get started, we wanna import some files into OpenShot. Right up over here, we have our project files and we wanna get some video and audio files in here. By far, the easiest way to import files is to simply drag and drop them in. Here I have File Explorer open in Windows and I have all of the sample files. Once again, if you wanna follow along, you can access all of these sample files in the description of this video. I have all of these files highlighted and once again, I can just drag and drop them into project files and here you'll see all of them load in this pane. As an alternative to load files, I can also go up to the top toolbar here and there's a plus icon. When I click on this, this opens up a file picker and I can navigate to my files and then import them this way too. I could also right click and I could click on import files or I could even press the shortcut key control F and that'll also open up the file picker. So you have lots of options to get your files into OpenShot. Now that I've imported all of my files in, let's say that you bring a lot of files in and you're trying to find, let's say, a video file or an audio file. Up above, I can very quickly filter all of the different files that are shown below. Here, if I click on video, I'll only see the video files. I can click on audio, it only shows me the audio files. And if I click on image, it'll show me only the image files. I don't have any image files here, so you won't see anything. To show everything again, I'll click on show all. Also right over here, I have a search field and I could very quickly search for specific files in the project file set. So let's say I wanna find Kevin eating a cookie. I could simply type in Kevin and there very quickly, I see that specific file. So I have a bunch of controls to find the files that I'm looking for. With all of my files now in the project files view, I can right click on one of these files and I could preview what the file looks like. This opens up a preview, and when I click on play, I can get a sample of what it looks like. And that's gotta hurt, pulling the baking tray out of the oven without oven mitts on, I don't know what I was thinking. I'll close this window. 
Now I wanna start editing and I just wanna pick the pieces that I wanna include in my commercial for the Kevin Cookie Company. Over here, I can right click on one of the files and there's the option to split the clip. Let's click on this. This opens up that same clip again. However, instead of just being able to preview it, I have some additional controls at the bottom. Here, I can set the start point and I could also set the end point. And here, I can use this to scrub the video so I could find the specific point where I want it to start. For this specific clip, I'm gonna use this to start my commercial and I want it to start right as the oven is opening. So down here, I'll set this as the start point. When I click on start, you see that it takes the thumbnail of this current clip. So it works as a visual indicator to let me know what the start point is. And here I'll go on a little bit and you see me reach in the oven and I burn my hands and there I pull the tray out and right there's when I wanna stop the clip. So it's gonna be about three seconds or so long. Right here, I'll click on end, and here too, you see that it takes the thumbnail of this clip and it inserts it in the end. Now this is my start point, this is my end point. Now I'll click on create. This window stays open and I can now go through and I could split the clip again if I want. Here I could set another start point and another end point, so I could split this in any number of ways that I want. However, for now, I just need this one clip, so I'll close out this window. Back in project files, one thing you might notice here is at the bottom now, I have an additional clip. So here's my original one where I pulled the cookies out of the oven, and then here I have my new one. I could have renamed it as I was splitting it out, but I left the same name in. This is now the new clip, which is shorter, and it just has the pieces that I want. I now wanna take this video clip and I wanna add it to my video. Down below, we see the timeline, and once again, this is how I start organizing my video. To get one of these clips down onto the timeline, I can simply click on it and then drag it down. And right here, you'll see that there are a few different tracks that I can choose from. Let me scroll down just so you can see all the different tracks. So there are five different tracks and I'm going to start placing everything directly onto track one. So I'll scroll down to the bottom and with track one visible, let me click on this and then drag it down and then I'll release it right here on track one. I now have my first clip down below on the timeline. And before I go any farther, I wanna save my project just so I don't lose anything. I've already been putting a little bit of work into this. So let me keep my progress. Right up here, I'll go to the file menu and then click on save project as. I'm going to save this as the Kevin Cookie Company commercial. Once you're done typing in the file name, click on save. I now have my first clip on the timeline down below, but you might notice it's pretty small. It's only three seconds long, so it looks pretty compressed here. If I wanna zoom in a little bit, I can use this bar right here to choose what my zoom level is. So here, if I drag it this way, this is gonna zoom out even more. So let's say you have a longer video project. You can zoom out more so you can see all of the details. Now my video is gonna be pretty short. It'll probably be a little under 30 seconds. So instead of going that way, I'll zoom in over here on the left. Here you see the plus icon, which indicates that it zooms in. And here you see the negative icon, which means that it zooms out. So here I've zoomed in a little bit and now you can see this clip better. Along with simply zooming in and out using this bar right here, I can also use keys on my keyboard. Here I could press the equal sign and that'll zoom in even more. I'm zoomed in all the way right now. I could also press the minus sign to zoom out. So here I'm zooming out and then I'll press the equal sign to zoom in. And here I could scroll back to the beginning clip. So you could use your keyboard to very quickly zoom in and out. Also, probably the easiest way to do it, I could press the control key on my keyboard and then I could roll my mouse wheel back to zoom out or I could roll it forward to zoom in. So just another way to zoom in and out on the timeline. I now have my first clip on the timeline and one of the things you might've noticed is when I inserted this clip down below on the timeline, up here in the top right hand corner, I have the video preview and this shows me what's currently on the timeline. Now, if I wanna see how my video is coming together, there are a few different ways that I can play it. I could press the space bar and that'll play the video. I could also go up here to the video preview and I could click on the play icon and that'll also start playing the video. One thing you might notice is when I clicked on the play icon, you'll notice that this play head starts moving. So here with the space bar, you'll see this play head move along. It's also referred to as the ruler. So this shows me my current position in the timeline and it corresponds with what we see in the video preview window. 
Now I can also navigate through my video simply by coming down here and I could click on the playhead and then I could scrub through my video clip. So this way I can get to the precise point in the video that I wanna to get to. I could also use my keyboard. I could press the right key on my keyboard and this way I can move one frame to the right or I could press the left key on my keyboard and I can move one frame to the left. So just a few ways you can navigate through your video. So far, I only have one clip on my timeline and it's not much of a commercial if I'm just pulling cookies out of an oven. So I can get some additional video clips down onto my timeline. Right up here next, I wanna show milk pouring into a glass. So I'll select number two up here and then I can simply drag and drop this down onto my timeline. Now, as I'm holding it here, I can choose the exact position where I wanna place this clip. One of the things you'll notice is as I drag it closer to the first clip, it automatically snaps into the end of the previous clip. Now, if I release right here, up here, there's a control that says snapping enabled. Here, if I turn it off and I take this clip, you'll see that it doesn't snap to the end. So here, maybe I want it to overlap just a little bit. However, I like leaving snapping enabled, so I'll toggle this box right here, and then I'll pull my clip so it sits right at the end. Now, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and you'll notice that this clip of the milk pouring into the glass, it's a fairly long clip. I don't think anyone's gonna wanna watch milk pouring into a glass for this long. So I wanna trim the clip a little bit, just like we did with me pulling the cookies out of the oven at the very beginning. Another way that we could trim a clip, when I have this clip selected on the timeline, I can navigate towards the beginning and you see my icon changes. Here I can pull it in right to the point that I wanna keep. So right here, maybe once the glass is about, let's say halfway full, I'll position it right there. This is where I want the clip to start. And then I could also select the end. I'll select the end right here and then I could choose the end point of this clip. Now I don't want it to be too long, so maybe right about there is enough time. I've now shortened this clip and I could click on it and I could reposition it on my timeline. And once again, I'll place it right after the first clip. Now, so far we've been adding every single video file directly to track one. And if we look up above, there's a track two, a three, a four, and a five. So when would we use these other tracks? The way to think of tracks is they're basically different layers. So right now we're using the lowest layer. So if I take another clip and I place it, let's say on track number two, here if I go to the very beginning and I start playing, you'll see it starts out with the oven because there's nothing on track two at this point. As it keeps playing though, it now hits this video file that's on track two. And because this is a higher track, it's also a higher layer. And so this overlays whatever's on track number one. If I were to insert additional video files on track three, that would overlay what's on two, and it would also overlay what's on one. And so I could add any number of tracks here. I could right click and I could add another track above, or I could even add another track below. Here I can rename tracks. Maybe that helps me keep things a little bit more organized. If I don't want a track to change, I could lock it, and I could also remove excess tracks. Now, I don't need this many tracks. This is just a pretty simple video project. So I could right click here and I could go to remove track. This will just clean up my view just a little bit. I only need two tracks for this project, so I'll remove all the other tracks. I also don't want this on track two, so I could click on this file and I'll just drag it down to track one and then position it right here. I'll use track two for my audio. So I could right click here and let me go to rename track and I'll call this audio. Next, I'll click on okay. Right down below, just to help me organize things, I'll right click here and let me rename this to video. Next, I'll click on okay. So far, I've been bringing all of my different clips onto the timeline simply by clicking on it and then dragging and dropping it onto the timeline. However, I do wanna show another way that you can use to get your clips onto the timeline. First, I'm going to position my playhead at the very end here, and then I'll go up and let me click onto file number four. Here, I'll right click on it, and right down here, there's the option to add to timeline. Here too, you'll also see the shortcut key. Let's click on this. This opens up a prompt where I can add this clip to the timeline. Here, I can see the start time, and this currently matches where my playhead is. I can choose what track I wanna add it to. Do I wanna add it to the audio track or the video track? Well, this is a video file, so I'll add it to video. I could also choose the length. I'll just leave that to the default. Also, I could set the fade, the zoom, and the transition. 
Now this is especially helpful. Let's say that you're pulling together maybe a photo slideshow and maybe you're importing, let's say 50 or maybe 100 images. You could bulk import all of them into your timeline and then you could choose a fade to use. You could choose a zoom. You could also choose a transition. And what's really neat is right up here at the top, you can choose a random transition. You could also choose a random zoom. So especially if you're pulling together a slideshow, this adds a little bit more variability to the show. Now with this video, I don't have that many files, so this add to timeline prompt won't be as useful for me. Just dragging and dropping works fine. However, I did wanna show how this is yet another way you can get content onto your timeline. For now, I'll click on OK. And there you see that it just inserted my new file. Now there is a little bit of a gap between these files, so I'll drag that and then place it right at the end of the previous clip. With these new clips on the timeline, you'll probably notice that they're fairly long compared to the first two, and that's because I haven't yet cut them down. So here you see that I'm filling up the milk glass, and right here it's about halfway full. And then as I transition to the next clip, well, here it's filling up from the very bottom again, and I want it to pick up from where this other clip left off. So here I'll go along, and maybe I want this, the clip to start right about here. So we looked at one way where I could simply drag and drop the end of this to basically trim my clip, but I wanna show you a few other ways that we can also trim the clip. Right up here, we have all of these different tools. And when I hover over this one, this is called the razor tool. I could click on that, and when I hover over this clip on the timeline, you see this straight line appear, or basically the razor. So let's say I wanna click right here. When I click there, it splits the clips right at that point. So I'm gonna turn off the tool for now, and now you see that I have two separate clips. It just runs right into the next one, but now I could work with these files separately. Let's say I just wanted to remove this file, I could hit the delete key, and that's now removed that file. So here my clip just picks up right from here. As an alternative to going over to the razor tool to split my different files, I could also right click on the file. Within this menu, I have an option for slicing, and when I hover over this, I have a few different options. I could keep both sides, keep left, or keep right. Now if I click on keep both sides, you'll notice this does the same exact thing as the razor tool. It's basically the same thing, but I can access that through a menu. I'm going to undo it by pressing Control Z, so my clip is just one clip again. This is one other way to access that same slicing tool, right here through the menu. Now, instead of clicking onto this menu and clicking on keep both sides, and instead of navigating over to the razor tool, I could also press Control K on my keyboard. When I press Control K, that does the exact same thing. So there are quite a few shortcut keys that I can use to make my editing even simpler. Once again, I'm going to undo that by pressing Control Z. When we right clicked on the clip, you probably noticed that there were those two other options. And let me go back and go to slice. So we have keep left side or keep right side. So let's see what these do. If I click on keep right side, when I click on this, you'll notice that everything to the left of the playhead gets wiped out. So here now my clip starts right here. And let me go on just a little bit farther to maybe this point. Let's say that I wanna remove everything to the right side and I wanna keep everything to the left. Here I can right click and let me go to slice and for this one, I wanna keep everything on the left side. So I'll select this option. So that removes everything over there. And here now my clip is cut exactly how I want it to be cut. So this is yet one more way that I can edit clips. Now, just like there was the shortcut key Control K to do a cut in the middle, the other two options of keeping to the left or keeping to the right also have shortcut keys. And for that, let's go a little bit farther down to this next clip. And this is where you see my hand appear and I start grabbing these cookies. Now let's say I want it to start maybe right there, right before the hand comes into the frame. So here I wanna keep everything to the right and I wanna remove everything to the left. Now once again, I could right click, I could go to this menu and I could say keep right side. But we could also use the keyboard. And for this, I'm going to press Control J. When I press Control J, it keeps everything to the right and it removes everything to the left. And let's go down just a little bit here and you see my hand come in and a whole bunch of these cookies disappear. And yes, I did eat these cookies, but maybe we just need about that many. Right here now, I wanna keep everything to the left and I wanna remove everything to the right. So for this, I'm going to press Control L and that gets rid of everything to the right. Now you might be wondering, well, wow, we have Control K, Control J, Control L, it's all these random keys. 
How am I going to ever remember this? Well, just to make things really simple, actually look at your keyboard and look at where those keys are physically located. Control K, K is right in the middle, that splices it or cuts it in the middle. So I'm going to undo that just to return the clip back. Now J is right to the left of K, and when you press J, it keeps everything to the right. I'll undo that, and if I press Control L, which is right next to K, that keeps everything to the left. So those three keys are all together, and if you look at just the physical location, it really helps to understand what those keys will do. K is in the middle, so it does the middle one, and then J and L are on the sides. When you're editing videos, shortcut keys can make things work a lot faster, especially if you have a lot of clips you need to edit. But you might be wondering, well, what are the shortcut keys? Or maybe I don't like pressing Control K, I'd rather press S on my keyboard for split, or maybe R for razor. Can I configure those? And you absolutely can. If we go up to the top menu and click on edit, right down here, there's the option for preferences. Click on this. Within preferences, we have all of these different tabs and all the way over on the right hand side, there's the option for keyboard. When we click on this, here you can review and see what all of the different shortcut keys are for OpenShot. And here are the shortcut keys that I called out. You have the Control K, the Control L, and Control J. And you could change these to whatever you want them to be. It also has some of the other shortcut keys that we looked at, like the equals and the minus sign for zooming in and out. So you could take a look at these, and once again, these will really help speed up your editing time. All of these defaults look good to me, so I'll close this out for now. I've now trimmed both of these clips to the exact length that I want them. Here I'll scroll to the left and I could simply drag and drop the file and there once again you notice the snapping. And here I'll drag the next file and I'll pull this down as well. Now so far I've been placing every clip so it just sits on the end. What if I pull the clip over? Here I'll take the fourth clip and I'll drop it so it sits over the third clip. And when I do that you see this weird rectangle appear. What is that? If I go back here, I'll place the playhead right so it appears here on the timeline, and then I'll play it. You'll notice that it fades. So when I drag one clip and I place it over another clip, it'll automatically apply a fade transition. Any type of overlap between clips automatically creates a fade transition. But let's say maybe I want a different transition. I could click on the fade right here and I could press the backspace key and that'll remove the fade. Now if I play it right from here, you'll notice that it's just a hard cut between the clips. Right up here, I can click on transitions and here I have a wide variety of different transitions that I can choose from. Let's say for instance that I wanna apply a circle in to out transition. I can simply click on this one and then I'll drag it down to my timeline. I'll place it right in between these clips. Here you'll see that the transition by default is pretty long. Just like we could do with one of the clips, I can click on the end and then I could drag it in just so it covers the overlapping portion of these clips. I'll place it right about there. Now, if I play my video, let's see what this looks like. Here you'll notice that I now have a new transition between these clips. So it's pretty easy to choose whatever transition you want and then you could switch between your clips in a seamless way. If I go back through my video now, let's click on this clip where you see the milk pouring in the glass. It looks like a pretty nice vibrant shot. If I go to the previous one, this isn't quite as bright and as vibrant as the next one. So they don't really seem like it's from the same shot. If I go over here, we have a third tab for effects. We started with project files then we clicked into transitions and now we have effects. Here too, we see a quick description of what we could find here. I'll click on next. And here we see all of the different effects that we can choose from. And I think if I increase the brightness a little bit on this clip, it'll better match the next one. Right up here, there's an effect for brightness and contrast. Let me pull that down and I'll place it over this clip of the milk pouring. I now drop the effect, but it doesn't look like the brightness has changed yet. Here though, I see that it inserted this B icon for brightness. Here I can right click on that and we can go into properties. This opens up a prompt, I'll click on next and here I see all of the different brightness properties that I can adjust. Here I can adjust the brightness and the contrast. Right now the brightness is set to zero. However, I can drag and drop it over and maybe I'll do a brightness of 0.09. That looks a lot more vibrant. So here now, if I play it, it more closely matches the next clip in the timeline. So that looks pretty good. 
So this is one way you could quickly apply different effects to your different video files. I now want to go through and I want to add the remaining clips. I've added four clips here so far and I have a bunch more. I have all the way through 12 clips. I'm going to add all of these to my timeline and feel free to do the same. You could practice some of the different trimming techniques. You could try right clicking and you could go to split clip to try cutting it here and then bringing it to the timeline. You could also practice dragging and dropping the edges to reduce the size. Or you could also go through and you could practice some of the shortcut keys like the control J, control K, and control L. Or you could just right click, go to slice, and you could test these different methods out. Give it a shot just so it starts feeling more like a habit. I've now added a whole bunch of video files to my timeline down below and I went through and I trimmed them to just the right length and hopefully you were able to do the same. Now so far you'll notice that we have a whole bunch of visuals but there's no music to go along with it so I want to add an audio track. Here I'll pull this up so we can now see both tracks side by side. I'll go up to the top and let's click on the filter for audio so we just see the audio files and here I see some music. I'll click on this and drag it down onto my timeline. Now that I've added the audio to the timeline, let's press play to hear how it sounds. One thing you might have noticed is the music doesn't immediately start playing. It takes a moment before it plays, but it's hard to tell when the music starts playing because right now we just see a thumbnail of this clip on the timeline. I can right click on this and right here there's the option for display and currently it's set to show the thumbnail. Instead, I could click on show waveform and this changes it from the thumbnail view to the waveform. So now I could see how the music plays in relation to the video clips down below. At the beginning, you'll notice that it doesn't actually start until a little bit in. So there's a little bit of a gap. I want the music to start right at the beginning. So here I'll click up on this razor tool and maybe right here on the clip, I'll cut it right about there. I'll turn off this tool and now I can delete that portion and I'll pull it to the beginning here. Now when I press play, it'll start playing the audio right at the beginning. With my music, it's a little bit loud and so I want to adjust the volume so it's a little bit lower. Here I can right click on this clip and within this menu there's the option for volume. Here I can reset the volume but I want it to be a little bit quieter. So here I'll go down and for the entire clip, let me go at maybe 80% of the volume. I'll select that and I think that'll sound a little bit better. One thing you'll see is as I'm zoomed out here, the music goes on a lot longer than my video goes on for. So I'm going to go right to the end of the video here and I want to cut off the music at this point. Now just like we've been editing all of our video files, we can also edit the audio file the exact same way. I'll press the Control and L key and that'll remove everything to the right and it'll keep everything to the left. So here I have the sound and the video end at the same time. When I play the clip right here at the end, you'll notice that the music just cuts off. It's a very harsh end and I'd rather have it fade out. Here I can right click on the audio and let me go back up to volume. Here I have two additional options, one for the start of the clip and another one for the end of the clip. Here I could select end of clip and I could set it to fade out. So maybe I want to do a fast fade out or I could also do a slow fade out. I'll select this option and it added some keyframes in here where it'll gradually reduce the volume of the music. So let's hear what that sounds like. I'll go up here and then let's plus press play. That sounds a lot better now. It's this gradual exit of the music. The music now sounds good, but I also want to do something to make the end video a little bit more interesting. Here you see Cookie Monster appear and then the company logo appears, but it just sits there. I think maybe I can make that a little bit more interesting by maybe zooming in on it a little bit. And to do this, I want to use something called keyframes. Keyframes might sound a little bit daunting, but they're actually easier to use than you would think. So let's test this out. First, I want to go back to right when the logo appears. So maybe right about here. I want to start zooming in at this point. So this is where I want to add my first keyframe. And then I'll add another keyframe at the end, which will be the end point of the zoom. So right down here, I'll go down to my clip. I want to edit this one, so I'll select that. And then I'll right click and let's click on properties. 
this opens up properties over on the left hand side and it might look a little scary there are all these different controls related to the file now all of these different properties define what this video looks like here for example i have the alpha and here if i adjust that down well that basically fades it out and here i could fade it in now I wanna have it zoom in on this clip. So here I'll go down and scale X and scale Y. That'll allow me to zoom in some. So right at this point in time, I want it to just be one. This is gonna be the start of the zoom. So right now I'll select this, I'll right click and let me go to insert keyframe and I'll do it for both scale X and for scale Y. And now they're both highlighted in green indicating that I now have a keyframe. If I move my playhead, you'll see that there's a green icon right down here letting me know that I've inserted a keyframe. What a keyframe is, is at this point in time, I could define what the properties are. So at this point in time, my scale will be at this level. Now at the very end of my clip, once again, I wanna zoom in. So I'll go to the very end here. Let me go right about there. And here too, I'm gonna to zoom in now. So I'm gonna adjust this property and let me go to maybe 1.25. So there you see that it expanded the width and I wanna make sure I keep these with a proper ratio. So here too, I'll enter 1.25 for the Y. So here you'll see it's a little bit zoomed in. Now, if you look down below, I now have two green lines. Basically what I'm saying is at this point in time, we're gonna kick off the zoom. And then between these two green points, this is where I want it to zoom in. So there it zooms right up until the end. OpenShot looks at these two points and I define the value at this point and I define the value at this point. And then OpenShot says, okay, well between these two points, I need to transition from this value of one up to 1.25 at this keyframe. And so here, as I pull the playhead through, you'll see how the number is adjusting over here. So take a look at that, how it goes up. So by default, it just moves in a linear fashion. Now I could also come over here and I could right click and I could change it to from linear to maybe ease in or ease out. So what is easing in or what is easing out? Well, with ease in, maybe it starts a little bit slower and then the zoom speeds up towards the end. Or with easing out, maybe it starts a little faster and then it slows down at the end. So depending on the effect you want. Here you could even do a combination of both. So it starts a little slower, speeds up, and then slows down again at the end. So these are a few different ways that you can zoom. With keyframes, you can apply them to any of the properties of this clip. So keyframes are very powerful in getting different desired effects on your clips. As we've been going through OpenShot, hopefully you're starting to realize how much power this application has. One of the neat things too is as I've been working through this, let's say maybe I wanna take a pane and I wanna move it somewhere else. I can come up here and if I click on this icon, this will pop it out. And let's say you have maybe multiple monitors. You can move properties wherever you want. Here I could place it somewhere. Here I could close it again if maybe I don't need it anymore. Here maybe I wanna close my project files because maybe I'm not working with them anymore and I just want the video preview and the timeline. You could expand and adjust everything in whatever way you want. Let's say you wanna go back to maybe the original state though. Here I could go up to view and I could click on views and I could switch back to the simple view. This is the one we started on. There's also something called the advanced view, which pulls in the properties and then I also see the effects. Here I'll go back to the simple view because I think that's a good use of real estate. Once you configure your view in a state that you want, you could go up to view, click on views, and here you could freeze your view or here I could go down and show all. So you have a few different options. Also, let's say I wanna use up my full screen. Here I could switch into full screen mode by clicking on F11. So just a few more ways to help you just focus on your editing. Okay, so we have pulled together a video, we've added some music, we've applied a few different effects. We're now ready to ship this commercial. We need the world to see it. Right up on the top bar, there's this red icon and this is for exporting the video. Let's click on this. This opens up the export video prompt and right up above, I can name my file. I can also choose where I wanna save it. And down below, I can choose how I wanna encode my file. By default, I see all formats, but if you wanna simplify, you can click on this profile and you can choose one of the profiles. Let's say maybe you're getting a video ready for, let's say YouTube. You could click on web and right down here, you can choose your target. So I'll choose, let's say YouTube HD and here I see some video profiles that I can choose from. 
I'll select this one with 1080p, 1920 by 1080, and 29.97 frames per second. But once again, there are many different profiles you, you can choose from. Just choose the one that's most appropriate for the work that you're doing. Right down here for quality, I'll choose high, and once I'm ready to go, I'll click on export video. While the video's encoding, you might be wondering, well, how do I really choose a video profile? And a lot of it comes down to what was the original source quality? Because typically when you pull together a video, you want it in the best possible quality. Right here, I have all of the video clips that I use in this project. Here you could click on one of the files, right click, go down to properties. Within properties, you can click on details and here you'll see the original quality of your video clip. Here my clip was 1920 by 1080 pixels. And right down below, I can see the frame rate of these clips. So that's the reason I chose these settings for my project because it matches my source clips and I wanted to maintain the best possible quality. And look at that, right now I'm at 100% and my video is now complete. Let's click on done and let's watch how it turned out. Well, that was a quick look at how you can get started using OpenShot. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. To see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. Also, if you want to see me cover any other topics in the future, leave a comment down below. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.